Ready for some more NFL action with the utter punts? No? Tough shit. Here we come. What am I working with? Dan, you have to take a, a finger. I, I feel for you all. You can do that. You'll only lose by 20. <laughs> Yes, welcome along. The utter punts are back and Dave's unavailable. We've replaced him with a younger, better looking and more agreeable member of the Keane family. Come to think of it, I'm struggling to think why we bring him back. Anyone? No? It's incredibly boring. How is that yeah, boring? Not... Uh, Carry on. Shut up, you. <laughs> if anybody mentions Taylor Swift, it's a straight red card and a two pod ban. We got everything right. Last week, yeah, cruised it last week. Pretty sure I only got one wrong. Professional, one wrong. Shh. Unbelievable. I tell you what, I tell you what. It's it's f yes, full lineup in the suburbs of Manchester today. All three of us in the room. It hasn't at all been problematic with camera angles and microphones. Not a bit of it. First up, he's our resident Raven, who surprisingly didn't make any trades on the Monday deadline. Evening, Dan Horton. Yeah, well, look, thank you. Yeah, don't need anybody else. We're all right. Yeah. <clears throat> Although King Derek would have been lovely. We're in for it. We're in for a couple, but that never happens. So we'll, we'll let's see where we are. We're, I think we're OK. We'll talk about okay. it we're as okay. we go through Utter Punts this evening. Now then, a new face on the Utter Punts roster. An apprentice punt. A Padawan punt. Rookie punt. Runt! Call him what you will. He's a more svelte member of the Keane family. And that's a good thing for squeezing the three of us all into one camera shot. Welcome along, Ollie Keane. Thanks for having me on. Um, you know, I'm just like Dave. I'm just as calm, subtle and medically knowledgeable. <laughs> well, we're up shit creek. Loads to come this week as we preview all of the week's TV games and we have a little bit of fun with these two NFL know-it-alls in association with Endzone Kit. And I've got something else to tell you shortly. This is Utter Punts. Look, we'll just get to the big news right at the top, shall we? In association with Beer Keller, mm -hmm. we are now Endzone uh, and Endzone Kit, both of us together. Uh, absolutely brilliant. So, brand new sponsor to the podcast, Beer Keller. They have venues in Liverpool, Manchester, Halifax, Nottingham, Birmingham. They are the place to go and watch sport of any description. And they are really, really pushing the fact that they are the best place to go and watch the NFL on a Sunday night. And we are absolutely delighted to be with them. Good food, good beer, good venue, loads of TVs, great people, and like sort of like-minded people to go and watch the games with. And we are absolutely delighted to have them along. So go and check them out. And maybe, just maybe, there might be something in the pipeline for Manchester in a couple of weeks' time. Can't tell you anything about it right now, but keep an eye on the Beer Keller socials at the beginning part of next week, and you might be in for a little bit of a surprise. We are absolutely delighted to have Beer Keller uh, along for the ride with us. Right, shall we do our news, gentlemen? Dan, do you want to start us off? Something that you've spotted in the NFL this week. Yeah, it's the Raiders. So they, they did the sort of technical sort of politician's news dump, didn't they? So normally, when sort of big, if the, the government have got something bad to tell you, they wait until something really fake, good, hap, big happens on a Friday and slip it into the news so no one notices it. The Raiders did the same thing. So on trade deadline day, they fired their general manager and the coach. Um, yeah. And it was sort of down at the bottom of the thing. But it, it's a strange one because three weeks ago, their owner, Mark Davis, was in the crowd at an LA Kings game, arguing with a fan of the Raiders who was saying, sack the coach. And he said, you need to smarten up, mate. You've got no idea. Three weeks ago. Um, and now he sacked him. So maybe he's smartened up. Um, they've only been in situ for a year. So they were both hired, I think, in uh, January 2022. Um, and they're fired sort of like, just over uh, 10 games, 15 games later. Uh, not impressive at all. Um, they've made a myriad of mistakes with draft picks. They've been an absolute shambles with some of the people they've drafted. And just look at the quarterback situation. So Derek Carr was, was extended in April last year and then let go. They signed Jimmy Garoppolo in the, in the off-season. They've just benched him for the rookie. Um, it's an absolute shambles. And it's, it's one of those franchises that is just in the mire and constantly, constantly wasting talent. They've got Devontae Adams, they've got Max Crosby, they've got Josh Jacobs, they've got a fantastic team. Uh, they've got some, some fantastic, fantastic players. But they're just managed and owned so poorly. And I just wonder at some point, do the league start thinking about moving owners on rather than just moving owners, moving coaches? Yeah, I... I... This is an interesting one. Have they gone a bit early, the Raiders, or have they done the right thing? They should never have hired him in the first place. I mean, I think it was a terrible hire. He's been a failed head coach before, um, Josh McDaniels. He was a failed head coach at the Broncos a few years ago, went back to New England as the offensive coordinator. Um, he's not a head coach. 
Um, and you could say you could see that last year, some of the decisions that were being made, some of the we we he was an utter punt a couple of weeks ago because yeah. of the game management um, terrible. So he's not a head coach, and you know it, it's more for me though that like I say a couple of weeks ago, the owners in the stands defending him almost he almost came to fisticuff. There was almost security getting involved because he screamed at the fans to smarten up. Three weeks later, he's changed his mind. Is that the type of person that should be running one of these organisations? Good question. It's not very professional of him. No. Um, and I think this has kind of proved, again, that we've seen with coaches from the Belichick tree that t Tom Brady kind of carried that team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the coaches are getting jobs off the back of his successes. And mm. Josh McDaniel, you know, he's a key example of that. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, right, Ollie. Um, in fact, I'm not calling you that for the rest of it. I'm going to call you Rook. Rook. For the rest of it. I'll take it. Uh, what have you spotted in the NFL this week? Um, well, as a Vikings fan, I have to talk about another non-contact injury in the NFL this week. Kirk Cousins tearing his Achilles tendon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's always had statistical success in the NFL. I think he's always, you know, you look at the PFF grades and people always shout that out. But I think when you look at the eye test, when you're looking at games... That green that game against the Green Bay Packers was the best I've seen Cousins play in five years in the Vikings. Hold that thought. You're doing brilliantly. Congratulations. This is sounding eerily familiar. This yeah. start this is starting to sound <laughs> like somebody who's half paying a compliment to Kirk Cousins before they take him out of the knees and or the Achilles, depending coming, on. Kat. You can see what's coming, can't you? Poor Kirk, undefendable. Here we go. No, we'll carry on. <laughs> Well, I was I was actually praising him. I think he. Yeah, you were. It's I what think... you're going to say next is the problem. <laughs> what was next? Yeah. Well, he's all right. Yeah. But, um, you damned know, him with faint praise. Obviously, Kevin O'Connell and Quasi Dov Mensa have had to move quickly. You know, yeah. it happens two days before the train, uh, the trade deadline, and you know, a lot of names were being put out. Ben Rufflesberger was one of them. Um, we panicked Dave with that one. That was sensational, by the way, when Dave went scrambling to a tweet that Ollie had sent, and actually it turned out to be a uh, an account Ollie had set up. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. I can't speak on that, but uh, yeah. Tom Brady was another rumour. People were trying to say, get him out of retirement. I think these were unrealistic. I think the move they've done to get Josh Dobbs in is a clever move. Yeah. Um, they haven't exchanged much in for him. No. I think they, uh, they got... They exchanged a seventh round pick for him and they got a sixth back and Josh Dobbs yep. um, from the Jaguars pick with the Panthers. So it'll be more like a late round fifth. So I think the GM's done really good there. I think Dobbs brings a new element that Kirk can bring. He's mobile. He can move on the ball. <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that O'Connell can adapt into the playbook. He can change it. Things that he couldn't do with Cousins, he can try with Dobbs. But... He's not going to start on the weekend. It's going to be we're going in with Jaron Hall. Mm. So my hope as a Vikings fan is that we never see Dobbs play because Hall has a breakout game like Will Levis did. Is it well? We won't know until we see him. Um, he's got more of a chance than Dobbs. Although Dobbs, when he when he went into the Titans at the back end of last year, picked up the playbook really quickly uh, and played well, well enough. Um, he then got he went back to Cleveland. They traded him right before the season started to Arizona, so he only only had sort of a week with the Arizona playbook, and has started the season well. Listen, the Cardinals are a terrible team, but he's played well, and he's had moments in games. I mean, they beat the Cowboys basically on the back of his legs. Mm -hmm. He's out. They've done well. You saw it coming a little bit, didn't you? Because yeah. um, the head coach of the so the head coach of the Cardinals said even after the uh, the Ravens straight after the Ravens game. He said um, it'll be Clayton Toon or Kyler Murray starting next week. So Josh Dobbs was nothing wrong, but he was being benched. And he was being benched because he was being traded. So he was going somewhere. Yeah, um, I, I was confused with that mm. when I initially saw that because yeah. I've seen quite a few of the Cardinals games. And they're, although they're one and seven, they've kept it close in yeah, the majority have. of their games. Yeah. And I think Dobbs has performed well with not many weapons in that offense. Mm. I'd agree. Um, so when I saw that, I thought surely he can't be benched for performance reasons so no. then you know the rumours started swelling in yeah. and, uh, and the they, Vikings acquired him the Cardinals have got a decision to make uh, on the other side of it because they, you know, they've got Kyler Murray who's just come back from an ACL injury um, and they've got a few games with him before they really and they're going to be at the bottom of the, they're going to be at the top of the draft so they're deciding is Kyler Murray the future quarterback of this franchise or are we looking at moving him eventually um, but they need to see him in the new offence new offensive coordinator there so it's, a, it's an interesting one. It's, it's a low-range pick. I mean, it's cost you absolutely nothing, so it's the right thing yeah. to do from a Vikings point of view. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things, again, with, with Cousins, though, that would probably frustrate, I imagine it frustrates David, is that um, they've done enough to not get a high pick, and he's now untradeable because he's injured. 
So they can, you know, if the if the if the trade deadline was in two weeks' time, not now. So there was another two weeks, and he was healthy, and they lost a couple of games. He'd be tradable. They would try and trade him. They can't now. So he's definitely on the roster as QB one next year because. He's injured, so no one's going to sign for him. So I think he's done it just enough to keep himself in a job for next year for the Vikings, which probably for Vikings fans is absolutely awful news. Um, but like you said, I mean, statistically, he's playing really well. He's having probably his best season statistically. The only statistic, though, that he doesn't ever do well in is winning big games. No. Okay. Hold that thought because um, <clears throat> with six games this weekend, we've got a load of previews to get yep. through. And as yep. much as you'd like to sit here and talk about Kirk Cousins until the cows come home, we're not going to be able to do it. <laughs> I decided uh, whether or not I was going to spend my time looking for a story that we could potentially discuss or whether I could figure out another game that we could play. And I oh, great. guess which one. Yeah, I want yeah. Them. we've gone like with the game. Saw, isn't it? There are four <laughs> NFL teams that feature a star in their logo. Yeah. Can you name them? Texans. Texans is one. Cowboys. Cowboys is two. Come on, Rook. Well, he got the two I was getting. All right, okay. Is, is the Steelers, are they stars? No, the they're diamond? definitely diamonds, they're diamonds apparently. Yeah. So I had them written down, but it's like half a point for the so Steelers. Nice. So you're missing two. Trying to think through. So the you've division. got the Texans, you've got the Cowboys. Star. Hmm. Steelers are off the table. None in the NFC North, I know that much. Um, None in the NFC North, he says. Yeah, it's all, it's all animals and that Vikings. Is. A star in the helmet. Yeah, would you like? Would you like a? Yeah, would you like a clue a towards the geography? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll go for the northeastern quadrant of oh, the, the United States. Oh, is the Raiders States. got an eye? The no. Star on the eye. No. It. Go on, no, what did no. say? Northern quadrant of what? Northeastern quadrant of the United States. So if you were going to Patriots? pick a quarter. Hmm? Patriots? Yeah, the New England oh, Patriots. Oh, in the, of course. Yeah, the New, New England Patriots. Patriots. Yeah, it's a yeah. different emblem, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, so you've got you've, me there. Um, you've got one more to get. And this one is Southern States, this one. Southern States. Southern States. Ooh, Tennessee, maybe. Ooh, Interesting. Are you going with Tennessee? Is it Tennessee? It is it's Tennessee Titans, yeah. It? yeah. So it's the Dallas Cowboys, the Tennessee Titans, the New England Patriots, Texans. the Texans, and the Steelers have got a diamond. Oh, yeah. You did dreadfully. Well, to be fair, I just wanted everyone to see how knowledgeable Dan is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just absolutely not going to fly. <laughs> uh, the problem I've got is I'm remembering all the old emblems, and then I'm not what the same. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely brilliant. I've got a load more of these games that we're going to be playing over the next couple of weeks, so uh, we'll we'll sort of whether, see whether we can dig those out. I can't wait to you know throw Dave a couple of curveballs. You've done well to survive, Ollie. Uh, stock market game. For those of you that aren't aware of what the stock market game is, we've picked one team to do worse than they did last season, three teams to do better than they did last season, and for every position difference that they are from their position last season, you get a point. So, I currently am sitting on five points. That's good, mate. Well done. Yeah, no, it's not. I've got worse than I was last week. Um, Dave has got better than last week. Well done. Broncos win, won't it? He's now on 15 points. Well, that's good score, 15. But, yeah. well beat that. Dan has made the furthest fall from grace and now only leads by 16 points. Yeah. He's on 31. Dan, can you cope with that? <laughs> it, I mean, we we'll gather ourselves and it has, head um, the trade deadline. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 the gap is shrinking though in this it trade is. game. It's going to shrink even more, I think. But the Vikings have had a bit of a run, haven't they? And I think they're about to. Um, yeah, but you've still got you've still got eight points with them, seven yeah. points on them. So yeah. We're still rubbish. Not too, you? not too bad. Uh, right. One of our long-standing sponsors here on. Um, Utter Punts has been endzonekit.co.uk. I could wax lyrical about them. They are absolutely fantastic. Instead, I'm going to let the advert do the talking. Utter Punts is proudly sponsored by one of the best kit suppliers out there, Endzone Kit. Endzone is a transatlantic company whose mission is to make finding kits a little bit easier and a little bit more affordable so you can represent your favourite American sports teams. Whether you're looking for NFL, college football, baseball, hockey, or basketball memorabilia, Endzone's got you covered. With sizes from newborn up to 3XL, anyone can find something at endzonekit.co.uk. 
And one of the things that we love is that they have a whole range of retro and pre-loved gear so you can rock your vintage style while supporting your team. So why not head to endzonekit.co.uk and find yourself a bargain. And because you listen to Utter Punts, you can have a 15% discount at checkout when you use the code PUNTS. Endzonekit.co.uk, the place to go for your American sports kit. Uh, yeah, we love them at Endzone Kit. Uh, code punts at checkout. And what's great about them is how much stuff there is that you would not be able to find anywhere else. It's the stuff that you don't see on those official websites. So go and have a check. It's absolutely belting. And I promise you, it's worth it if you can't necessarily afford forking out 150 quid for a replica jersey. Uh, right, should we start the previews? What a game week we yeah. have got this week, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely stacked from top to bottom starting in germany at 2 30 on sunday the 5th miami dolphins at kansas city chiefs at six and two versus six and two tyreek hill is reunited with patrick mahomes and maybe just maybe the momentum is with the dolphins going into this one after the chiefs took a massive shit on the pitch last week (laughs) they were dreadful (laughs) Dan? It's, it's been coming. We we spoke about it a, a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? We said they're not playing well and they probably need a punch in the mouth to sort of sharpen themselves up. Ready we for the, did um, say that. It, it probably happened a bit late because it happened on Sunday night and they, they weren't able to react quickly enough for the trade deadline. But there was a play that, I don't know if you saw it, and you, you might want to look it up, there was a play that they were running and the game was still close and they had they, they had the ball, the Chiefs, and they had Kadarius Tony, who's their... He's their gadget. He's their their new Tyreek Hill almost. He's the guy that they want to use in the gameplay a lot more. They want to use in the game the game plan a lot more. And Mahomes goes to snap the ball, flares him out, so he, he puts him in motion. So he runs behind Mahomes from the right hand side and then checks back back to where he was. Then Mahomes does it again. So he's, he's trying and by doing that, he's trying to see what the defense are doing. Are they going man to man or not? He does it again and he goes back. And as he then snaps the ball, he hands the ball off as an end around. So Tony comes around and takes the ball, and he's knackered. He's yeah, because he's already run it twice. Uh, but the, he shouldn't be. They should be able to do this. But by the time he got the ball, he had no, no, he had nothing in his legs, Gas. and he's tackled behind the line. That sums them up. That they don't look, they don't look sharp on offense at all. Um, what what is interesting about this game for me is it, it, I often talk about the league as a people have got a one week memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if this game was being played last weekend, right? Mm-hmm. The Chiefs have just beat the Chargers and looked really impressive. Yep. And the Dolphins have just been smashed by the Eagles. That's a week ago. So if this game was last week, Chiefs are heavy favourites, aren't they? Yep. But they're not. No. Because last week, the Dolphins looked good again against the bad Patriots team and the Chiefs got beat. Does it change that much? I, no, I don't think it actually does. I think that I think the Chiefs have just had a dud week. I think they've I think as yeah. you've said, they've been punched in the mouth and actually it could it could go completely the opposite way and actually it puts them back in the boxy. Yeah. What I find really interesting here, Ollie, the Dolphins Offense last week, 31 points, 324 yards. They are officially the top offense in the NFL for points per game and yards per game. They are a machine, that O-line. However, we haven't, um, and we have, Mm -hmm. but generally the NFL community hasn't given the Chiefs enough credit for their defense, which has been excellent they have conceded the second fewest points per game in the nfl mm-hmm. and they are fourth fewest yards per game allowed this is a mean chiefs defense they just can't quite get the offense going the same way can they um yeah i mean there's a different part of that defense as well they've run defense you know they're 26th in the league and the dolphins raheem Mostert has the most touchdowns rushing touchdowns in the entire league so that's something that could be exploited mm-hmm. But that you're right. Their defense has been underrated this year, but the offense just hasn't been able to click yet. I think the fact that they're six and two and still haven't clicked as a team shows how how good Patrick Mahomes is, how good Andy Reid is as a coach. You know, I think this game has potential to be a game of the year. Yeah. I think the German fans are really lucky to have yeah. this game there. Mm-hmm. I think you could see a really high-scoring matchup. You know, two top offenses, two top quarterbacks, and two of the best coaches in the league. I think um, I think the Chiefs fans might be slightly upset that this isn't at Arrowhead. This is one of those games that comes around where you're like, oh, it's a it's a yeah. juicy old tie. It's like, you know, it's like having a North London derby held in the north of Scotland. Like you'd be a bit disappointed that it wasn't being played at your home ground, wouldn't you? 
You would, especially in a big game. I mean, they only get eight home games sometimes. Every other year they'll get nine, but there's only, you know, we're not like, it's not playing, we're not playing soccer here where there's 20 home games a mm-hmm. year, 30 home games a year with Cups. There's eight home games a year. Yeah. Um, and that's a massive advantage, especially for the Chiefs. They have a fantastic home record. If this game was being played at Arrowhead, I mean, this game is level. There's no, there's no points in the handicap. They're saying it's level. If this was at Arrowhead, the Chiefs would be three points favourites. I think if this was last week and at Arrowhead, the Chiefs are probably six Seven. points favourites. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not. Um, and they're not because I think the Dolphins are... I mean, we come down to the back thing, though, is that the Dolphins don't beat anybody or they haven't beaten anybody. So their record... The, the teams they've beat have got a record, I think, of about 11 and 27. Mm-hmm. And the teams they've lost to have got a record of 20, uh, of sort of 14 and 2. So they've lost to, the, to two good teams. They're playing the Chiefs, the Chiefs of the World Champions. So will the Dolphins finally beat a good team, a contending team, or will the Chiefs stand up and be the champions that we want? It's a tough one to call. Which way are you going, Ollie? I'm going to go with the Dolphins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, going I'm going Chiefs. Just because I, there is an old phrase on other punts for us that have been here for a long time, and that's never back against Mahomes, ever, ever back against Mahomes. doesn't matter what's going on. So I'm not backing against Mahomes, despite of where he is. And Dan is about to go against the rule that he put in place. You're going rule. Dolphins, aren't you? Uh, if this was in January... Even if yeah, this was at, not, if this was in January November. and it was in Miami, I would take the Chiefs. Okay. I'm not. I'm taking the Dolphins. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the defense on the Chiefs has been good, but Nick Bolton broke his hand uh, two weeks ago, and their run defense hasn't been the same since. Uh, and that's what the, the the Broncos did to them, devastated them through the run last week and controlled the game. And the Chiefs just couldn't get going. And I think the Dolphins will do exactly the same. Ollie's right; they're a great run offense. Okay, good stuff. Uh, how did we do on our picks last week, by the way? We got everything right apart from the 49ers. Niners let us down again. Yeah, but don't say anything bad about the 49ers. They're our favourite team. Well, it's true. They are. Yeah, yeah. We love the 49ers and they love us. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the most expensive player in there. The most expensive defensive right. player in history. I'm glad this has come up. Yeah. So this week, yeah. we posted a YouTube short, mm-hmm. which then went out on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. And it was about Nick Bosa. Yeah. Okay. And actually, the we were being Ohio State. very complimentary yeah, we were. about Nick Bosa. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were saying that actually, forget what he looks like and the stats, he's actually one of the best defensive players in the league, right? Oh, the yeah. best, yeah. Yeah. By far. Yeah. The reason that Dan has gone so overboard here is he's now Nick Bosa's best mate, who yeah. not only liked the post, but followed us a punts on social media and responded to messages from you. Yeah. It's all love. That, that was how he signed off. <laughs> yeah. It's all love. It's all love. I tell you what we'll do. We'll put a picture of it up on the YouTube version of the podcast now. <laughs> See? It's all love, baby. Yeah. Uh, right, great. Let's move on. Um, yeah, not bad for us. And then no, let down by four, Nick Bosa and the 49ers. Yeah. 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 Uh, Seattle Seahawks at Baltimore Ravens is the next one. We will start with the Ravens fan. Um, two bird teams. Bird teams are on top of every every division at the moment. A they bird are, team? The, only t- the only bird team that isn't on top of their own division is the Cardinals, and because they're in the, in the, same, with the Seahawks, Seahawks so who are on top of. Top. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Bird so, teams for the win. Yeah, Ravens, Eagles, <clears throat> Seahawks, and who's the other one? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's only one attention. in the AFC. Come on, the Falcons, Falcons, mate. Dirty birds. Why would you do that to me? Yeah. Why you would you? Why would you put me on the spot? You do to me every week. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but my job here is to keep you two in check. It's not to be the knowledgeable one about the NFL. That is your hat. You wear it. Don't pass it on to me. It don't fit. Fine. Um, talk to me. Seahawks or Ravens? Yeah, great matchup. Um, because you've got two really good, really good defenses. Two of the top defenses in the league. Are they're playing well? And the Seahawks have just added. Dexter Lawrence from the Giants this week uh, to bolster their run defence. Um, and, and Devin Witherspoon at cornerback, their rookie, is playing unbelievable. And he, he, he I mean, he's, he's he's a character as well. So th- he was he made some comments about Deshaun Watson this week, um, <laughs> which was very, very funny. Yeah, they were good. Um, so they're, they're playing well and they're feeling themselves and they run the ball really well, the Seahawks. So this is a, this is a game of... It's like, you know, the Spider-Man gif where they're both pointing at each other? Yep. Because, and this is the Ravens and Seahawks because they are pretty much the same team. Um, the only difference, I think, for me is that the Ravens have got Lamar Jackson. Yeah, um, cheat so code. If this comes down to somebody, either Geno Smith or Lamar Jackson has to make a play, then I'm probably going with Lamar Jackson. But this is going to be such a tight game and such a good game. It'll be a great game to watch. I think this is the game of the week. 
Not the other one. No, I think this is the I don't think it's the because these the two are both things. playing really well. Yeah, I there's agree. no question marks about these teams. Yeah. Uh, they're both playing well. They're both at the height of their powers. They're both healthy, and I think um, for me, uh, this is the game of the week. I, 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 but obviously, I've got. Well, you're slightly biased, but that's yeah. fine. That's fine. You're allowed to be. Um, you want to try being a Giants fan, then you've got nothing to be happy about. No, I'm all right. Try being a Giants fan and a Manchester United fan, then you've got absolutely nothing to shout about I've got to be really careful moving on before right. I get myself into trouble uh, Seahawks defence is improving as you've just touched on they've conceded under 20 points 21 points in their last four games so yeah. really really important for them that they're coming back into it at this time there's a couple of other things to note here the, the Ravens are now the sixth best team on third down in the NFL yeah which means, and it comes back to something that Dan's just said, doesn't it? When you've got Lamar Jackson, his ability to convert in pressured situations is absolutely huge. Yeah, I think you know, he's, I think he's a top five quarterback in the NFL. Yep. And when I looked at the list of games, I thought this will. Who would be you the... put above him? Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I'll, I think that's fair. I think we'd all put Patrick Mahomes above. Fair him. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Allen. Give over. Yeah, not having that. Joe Burrow. Oh, come on! Oh, come on! You don't think Burrow's better no, than Lamar no, Jackson? No, no, I don't. I don't. I, I, I've thought Lamar Jackson has probably been the second best quarterback in the NFL for the last five years and unfortunately been let down by some of the stuff around him, which is being fixed by the Ravens, as we've seen this season. And possibly Justin Herbert as well, above Lamar. I think if Lamar had played all his games, he'd be top two. Yeah, all right. But okay. we haven't seen enough in the playoffs. Because he hasn't been there to see what his abilities are in big pressure situations. Fair. We've only seen him in the regular season, which is the only reason I've dropped him down. I think... Great way to stick to your guns, Rook. You know, when you were put under some severe pressure from the existing punts and you've just you've stuck with it and you should be proud of yourself. I've lived with Dave for 18 <laughs> years. <laughs> uh, right, talk to us about, um, talk to us about Raven Seahawks. Yeah, I, I think, like Dan said, I think this could be the game of the week. You know, there's so many good games this uh, this week. You know, we just talked about Casey and the Dolphins. But I, I think the Ravens have the edge. Um, I wasn't convinced by them at the beginning of the season. You mm -hmm. know, quite low scoring games. But that Detroit game, that really impressed me. The way they blew them out. They just carved up their defense. They didn't let Jared Goff do anything to them. I think the Ravens are going to go on a roll here. I think they're one of the best teams in the NFL this season. Yeah, and they, they, the last couple of years they've done this. They've done this exactly same thing. They've got out of the blocks quick. They've run. They've won some scrappy games, and then for four or five game spells in the middle of the last two seasons, they've looked like the best team in the league. And then injuries have hit. So we're, we're just in that purple patch now where we're hoping, or as, as Ravens fan, you're hoping that everyone stays healthy. Yeah. Uh, Lamar stays healthy. We haven't seen them go on because he's been injured the last end of the last two seasons so if he can stay healthy and the Ravens can stay healthy Ollie's right they are an absolute superpower especially with the Bills dropping off a little bit but they're in a division the AFC North every single team in the AFC North has got a winning record um, it's incredible so you know they're, they're, they're going to have to come through some tough games starts with this I mean the Seahawks are as good as they come in the NFC at the moment yeah and last week just a couple of, of sort of stats a couple of stats to pick out on a couple of players for you Gino last week 254 yards two touchdowns two interceptions a 78 rating mm. tough game for him but still put on 254 yards and the one to watch for the Ravens for me if we, if we take Lamar out of it and that is Mark Andrews who currently mm. is running at 4.6 receptions a game 56 yards a game and has already gone into the paint six times uh, so far this season. He is a monster when yeah. he gets going. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Which way are you going, Ali? I'm going to go with the Ravens. Yeah, me too. Ravens, Dan? Obviously. Yeah, Ravens. Good stuff. Uh, right, moving on to the last preview in this section before we go and have a look at Coach's Corner, which has actually come from a comment on YouTube this week, mm -hmm. which is really good news. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Dallas Cowboys at Philadelphia Ooh. Eagles. And the games keep coming. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is, is the great. game of the week. This could be the game of the week. Well, you've, you've both picked a game of the week. I'm going to go with this as my game of the week. Cowboys at, at Eagles. Eagles flying again. Nice. I, 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 th yeah, fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> Um, Sunday the 5th of November at night when that really hurt Lincoln Financial <laughs> Field is the uh, is the is the venue there are two quarterbacks absolutely coming into this one in red hot 
form. Jalen Hurts, 319 yards, four touchdowns, 135 rating. Dak Prescott, 304 yards, four touchdowns and interception and 133 rating coming into this one. They are absolutely flying. However, if I was to give you the, this final stat, I'm going I'm to come to you first, Ollie, okay. that actually Jalen Hurts is performing better under pressure than he is without the pressure there. Last mm. week, under pressure versus the no pressure 135 rating, 142 rating and two touchdowns versus pressure for Jalen Hurts last week is he's gifted. I think he's really impressive as a quarterback. As much as that pains me to say, is I can't stand the Eagles like my dear uncle. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> No, I think he's going to get pressured by the Cowboys' defence. You know, Mika Parsons is one of the best edge rushers in the league. Yep. Um, so we'll have to see how he does, how he carves them up. Um, in terms of Dak being on red-hot form, I personally think Dak's going to Dak. And uh, he just bullies... It's on, just a matter of time. He, he just bullies on the teams that aren't on the level of the Cowboys, teams that aren't particularly proven in the league. And whenever... have, you, have, you, have, you, have you met him? <laughs> oh, he has been calling Dak Prescott a flat-track bully for essentially this entire rot upon season. That's exactly think, what you've just done. I think we're going to get on. Yeah. 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 Wrong, yeah. No, I, I, I do think that whenever the Cowboys have a high-scoring game, you know, they won, was it 43-20 against the Rams? Yeah. Um, that They tend to fall off the next week. And I just think, I don't think they have it in this game. I don't think it's going to be as tight as people think. No, I think there'll be a lot of points in this game. I, w I would sort of uh, uh, eggs that way, and I think the line's quite low for, w for what I think will happen. The Dallas, for me, are, they're, they're an absolute conundrum because for weeks on end, they're a bit like the Bills. So I'm starting to liken the Bills and the Cowboys to each other, whereas game by game, they can look like the best team in the league mm -hmm. and they can beat anybody. Agree. In that form, they can beat anybody because they're great on both sides of the ball. They look like a really powerful team. Um, and then three weeks out of four, they'll look brilliant. And then that other week, they'll, they can lose to anybody. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so inconsistent. And when you, when you want to get to a team now, at this start of the season, you, they really need to start rounding into some sort of form. So look at teams like the Bengals now. They're really starting to hit form. And right now, they're probably as consistent, as good a team as there is in the league, yeah. even though they're bottom of their own division. Um, and the Cowboys, they're just too inconsistent. The Eagles, week in, week out, you know exactly what you're going to get from the Eagles. They're going to they're gonna run the ball. And if that doesn't work, they can hit these passes. Um, you, for me, the consistency you, wins. You say that, mm. but I saw something from the Eagles last weekend that I wasn't anticipating mm. and we all thought the tush push was coming didn't we, yeah, we and yeah. then all of a sudden a fake tush it push. wasn't it was a fake tush push, push, push. And you, th you thought that we'd seen it all before <laughs> and we hadn't seen it before and I think actually that makes them even more dangerous the Eagles having the, now you don't know which way they're going to go no you can't fully commit to stopping yeah. it yeah. it makes it even harder to stop but so. I would point out that last week against the commanders was the first time the tush push failed that's true. Yeah. And For, it, to be fair, it was it was their own fault. It was fumbled on the one yard line, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, it's not know, really a psych stop psychologically. You know, it's dropped to a ninety-two percent success rate. It's just it's ridiculous. Disgraceful. And you know, the Commanders have seen them twice this year, so they've yeah. played each other twice in four weeks. So I mean, they're just bored of it. But both games have been really high scoring. So they, they they've seen enough of it. So they just threw everybody at it to stop it and took the risk. Yeah, but, yeah. and it worked for um, them. Yeah, uh, one to watch out of this one, and that's Darren Bland. Yeah, the cornerback yeah, yeah. for the Cowboys. Yeah. All right. As of last week, there is no corner holding quarterbacks to a lower rating this season than Darren Bland. He is on fire. He held Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua to 17 targets, seven receptions last week. It's, I mean, it is great going. So if you want to see a, you know, a decent corner playing in a decent secondary, there you go. So he's he's got three pick sixes this year in yep. eight games. And the record for NFL season is four. But there's, I think there's six players with four pick sixes in a season. He's already on three. Um, so he, that might be a record that's looking to be broke as we get through the year. I love it when I try and outstat Dan and then Dan <laughs> just slaps back with a better stat than the stat that I had to outstat the stat. Sensational. Uh, which way are you going, Ollie? Uh, I'm going to go with Philly. I think, I think they've got the edge. Yeah, I think they've more than got the edge. It's Philly for me too. Uh, yeah, I, for me, 
they're the best team until somebody really puts it to them and, and gets them out of form. And, and to me, they look all over the field the best team. And they've got better this week. Right, on the way, we will do second lot of previews. Uh, we will also have a little bit of a chat about who our utter punts of the week is. But coming up in a second, it's Coaching Corner. And as I said, uh, we had a comment from uh, a YouTube comment from Stephen, and he says, guys, not sure if you've got the coaching corners all lined up. Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> but if you could explain the rankings and seeding, as I don't get them completely. Also, why doesn't every team play every team? Why do teams even in the same division not play the same 17 teams? Well, let me tell you something, Stephen. We love to answer these questions when they come in, namely because it means that I haven't got to think about one. But even better when I get the response in the WhatsApp group that says, Oh, that's going to be a pain. <laughs> and I go, oh, joy. <laughs> Off they go. Coaching corner with Dan and Ollie. Ollie, schedule. Yeah, so the schedule is kind of, the NFL does it on a rotational basis so that every four years, all the teams have played each other at mm -hmm. least once. You're um, already doing better than your uncle. Carry on. Yep. Oh, yep. Thank you. you. It's all right. That's lovely. Um, Dave, you rubbish. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, you play all the teams in your division twice, um, home and away, and then you'll get... Um, I've so put him off. What? I've put him off. Yeah, you've thrown him. <laughs> yeah, I've thrown him. Yeah, you, you were doing really well. Yeah. I'm it's doing, all right. Yeah. You're calm. You're doing all right. Yeah. I need, I need to check your notes. Yeah. Rotate, so the NFL do this on a rotational basis, right? Yeah. The schedules. Yeah, and the reason they the reason they do it just well is they want they want it to be as fair as possible. So they want they, they want to give the better teams a harder schedule and the worst teams an easier schedule. Yeah. So at the start of the year, you'll hear terms, and this is probably where the questions come from, is, well, they've got an easier strength of schedule um, in certain divisions. So the NFC South this year have got an easier strength of schedule, mainly because they play each other twice, as Ollie's just said. Yeah. Um, so it, that's what it's to do. It's, it's the other sort of aim that the NFL has is to parity in the league. They don't want the best team having they're playing the worst league. Yeah, like uh, the Vikings finished thirteen and four last year, which yeah. may have been seen as a fraudulent record. But it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was. Yeah. I mean, I think we've been better this season, despite being four and four as an overall team. Um, but when you looked at our schedule this year, it's really difficult. You know, yeah. we've had the, we've got the Bengals, we've had the Forty Nine ers, Philadelphia, Kansas City, all in a short period yeah. of time. You know, and then we've got our divisional games, um, and the Chargers as well was another one. So yeah. I think. Yeah, it just works on a rotational basis. The NFL is a league built to help teams that have failed the previous season to get the best chance of improving, not just with the scheduling, but also in the draft. So this is the reason that the Giants are so terrible, is that they fake their way to a winning record last season and then all of a sudden get a more difficult schedule this season. The worst thing you can do. It's Overachieve is the worst possible. Yeah, especially yeah. if it's not if it's not genuine like if you're yeah. progressing so you basically you play your own the 17 games are made up of you play your own division twice that's six yeah you then play everyone in your division plays the same two conferences in your own division yeah. so the ravens for example just it's easier this year are playing the afc uh, the afc um east yeah. and the afc west right then you then there's four then there's four games against an nfc um division mm -hmm. so this year the Ravens are playing the NFC West which is why last week they played the Cardinals this week they're playing the Seahawks they also right. play the Rams on the 49ers okay, right? that makes sense. as do every other team in their division the, the other games then are made up of strength of schedule games so they look at games where you finished last year and your, your record last year and they put you against teams with an equal record so if, like, like Ollie said, the, the the Vikings finished 13 and 4, so they've copped for the Chiefs this year. Who also Chiefs finished. Yeah. Yeah. Who had an equal record. And that's, that's sort of how they work it out. Which, so generally, the teams in the same division will play a lot of the same teams, yeah. but two or three will be different every year. Uh, that was Coaching Corner. We're going to get into the second part of the previews right now. Stephen, don't worry. I know you asked us about the seedings, but given the fact that we've got an extra game to preview this week and given the fact that I can't be bothered to think of another Coaching Corner for next week, we're going to do the seedings then. Win, 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 win. Uh, right, let's move on. Um, right, Bills at Bengals. These are two teams coming into form, actually. Both of them all of a sudden just maybe feel like they've turned a little corner. Bengals definitely mm -hmm. feel like that. Bills, as we've already spoken about on this podcast, have been a little bit um, hit and miss. Dan, do you want to start us off with this one? Yeah, this is this has become a naughty rivalry game. Mm -hmm. These two teams really don't like each other. Um, this was the game last year that Damar Hamlin 
um, had the heart attack in, the game was abandoned, they never played it, which meant the Bengals couldn't get the number one seed. Um, they then went and played the Bills and knocked the Bills out of the playoffs before everyone thought they'd beat them, uh, the Chiefs in Arrowhead and didn't. Um, well, not everyone. Um, so the, 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 there's a real not dislike. Really. I, the Bills... You say the Bills have hit form. They beat the Bucks, but before that, they'd lost two on the bounce. Yeah, I've only got, I've only got a week's memory. We've well, already week's established memory. this. Yeah. But that was 10 days ago. So they've had a what's called a mini bye week. So they played Thursday night to Sunday. Yeah. Um, but this is on the road at, at, at Cincinnati. And what Cincinnati did to San Francisco last week, mm-hmm. um, you have to have them as favourites because they, yeah. they look like they're really clicking on all, on all cylinders. And the Bills, I think, have still got a few things to work out. Um, what's always interesting for me at the trade deadline is who is making moves, which team thinks they need to do more. The Bills have added uh, Leonard Fournette, so the running back that was at the Bucks, yep. uh, which is an interesting one given that Derrick Henry was clearly the market and so was Saquon Barkley. Mm-hmm. Um, but Leonard Fournette will give them a power runner, which they haven't got. Um, so they're making their intent clear. They're saying we want to really run the ball. We want to take the pressure off Josh Allen um, to help him to spread the field out and to, to commit defences to stopping the run. So they're, they're clearly still trying to figure out what the best version of themselves is. I think the Bengals know exactly what the best version of themselves is, and I think that gives them the advantage. Uh, Josh Allen last week, 324 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, uh, 106 against a rating of 106 against Tampa. Um, I think, Ollie, for me, the stat that might cause Bengals fans a little bit of worry is that they are currently the second worst in the NFL, giving up yards to tight ends. Mm. And Dalton Kincaid is one of those up-and-coming tight ends that you think to yourself actually got a little bit about him. They gave up 149 yards to George Kittle last week. Yeah, I, I think it, it's certainly a weakness in their defence. Um, but I I do think the Buffalo haven't been convincing this season. I know people will have this game as close, but I think the Bengals are at a point now in their season where they're going to march on, they're going to get on a run of form, which they tend to do every season since they've had Joe Burrow. I think they're the better team. However, the Bills have been targeting their other wide receivers more than Stefan Diggs against Buccaneers. Um, Khalil Shakir got 92 yards and Gabe Davis was targeted way, a lot more than he was previously because Stefan Diggs was put in double coverage by the Buccaneers. So that does uh, that does give the Bengals something different to think about. And like Dan said, they've brought in Leonard Fournette, which is a power runner, which they haven't had in James Cook and Latavius Murray. So... I think it's going to be a good game, but I do think the Bengals, they have that edge in the game. You mentioned Dalton Kincaid. It's interesting that they, they drafted him this year quite high, even though they had Dawson Knox, who was a really, really good functional tight end. He got injured, though, the week before, and actually sometimes better by subtraction, right? So by actually Dawson Knox being removed completely from the playbook, Dalton Kincaid got a bigger role and really grew into it, and yeah, they needed that. Yeah. But they they haven't had a second receiver, really, or a second option for Josh Allen good enough to challenge. Gabe Davis has flashed, especially in the playoffs, yeah. but in regular season, he disappears. Um, and he, But he did have a decent game last week, but them him having that second option, as well as then having a balanced run game, I think really helps the Bills. He's also going to get a second game here where he can potentially have another yeah. g- growth stage, yeah. especially if the Bengals have been... I mean, like I say, they're the second worst in the NFL against tight ends. They really, really struggle. If he can get a foothold in this game, Dalton Kincaid, it, it doesn't have set him up for you know future in the NFL as a... a, as a you know, franchise tight end, yeah, especially in that offense where they will move, they will, they will put, they will lay the ball out, and especially if the first option isn't there, he may look to dump off. And Dalton Cade, if he's open, is he, he's a great pass catcher because he's got such a good range, he's such a body type, he's, he's hard to box out. And if you've got a cornerback on him, he's too big and he's too quick for a linebacker. He's the ultimate mismatch. Um, so that gives them a problem, definitely. We spoke a little bit earlier um, in the season on one of the episodes about who our favorite tight ends currently five tight ends are in the in the NFL and Dalton Kincaid's name came up not from you or me but definitely from yeah. your uncle Dave so he's a big fan yeah. uh, anything else to say on this one uh, just that the, the, the bills are inconsistent so a bit like what they said with the Cowboys you mentioned both teams here against each other and the bills on their day can be world class and they can lose to a really bad team um, so which which bills are you going to get is the question yeah I mean, Allen, Josh Allen has thrown eight interceptions this year. He's he tied with Patrick Mahomes on eight interceptions. Terrible, which, terrible. Which, yeah, worst quarterbacks in the NFL. <laughs> uh, which way are you going, Ollie? I'm going to go with uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, Bengals. Dan? You going Bengals? Yeah. Give me the Bills. Mm. Oh, does that mean I've got the deciding vote? Yeah, give me the Bills. The Bills are the championship team. Go and prove it, Cincinnati. We've got this, Liam. It's fine. <sighs> I don't know which way to go. 
Um, would a Bengal beat a buffalo in a fight? Wow, this is in the jungle, right? So yeah, well, in Cincinnati. yeah, so it's in the jungle. So you're going to put a buffalo in the jungle. Many. Many buffalo yeah. against one, one. Bengal. No, it's not. It's Bengals. It's plural. Yeah, it is, but they tend it's to be... It's a single buffalo they tend and to plural be Bengals. Animal, right? They don't tend to travel D in... Does the buffalo time. have the mafia backing it up? All right, hang on a second. We, let's not go there for crying out loud before we end up with the mob knocking on the, the dark door. Better, this is a uh, I'm going to go Bills. Brother-in-law. Good. You Sorry, choose mate. wisely. No, it's nothing personal. Family first. Um, <laughs> I just think if both teams play absolutely at their best, yeah. the Bills are the better team. What you what you're betting on is that the, they don't have an inconsistent week. Yeah, because the Wait. Bengals are super consistent, but they're not. Their ceiling isn't as high as the Bills. I, I agree. The problem is that they have been highly unreliable. The yeah. Bills all That's season long. So, <laughs> uh, right, Chargers at Jets. Jets. Oh God, at, oh, Jesus, <laughs> they stink. <laughs> right, look, I'm going to put it this way, Jets fans. You held the Giants last week to a net minus nine yards. A net. Minus nine yards. This is if you take into account large, large yards lost. Lads. <laughs> Talk about myself again. Uh, yards lost to sacking. Minus nine. Beautiful. You beat us by a field goal. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Minus nine yards, and you could only beat the Giants by a field goal. It's because you're shit. Um, oh. No, nah, come on. Mm. Wilson, 244, 240 yards, a touchdown, 78 um, 78 passer rating it's just not it's just not good enough against a giant side that have been really really poor I just can't see a way through this for them I, this has got charges written all over it they're, well they're, they're four and three the Jets we, we said at the start when, when Rodgers went down we said listen if they, they take being at three and three because their schedule was brutal Cowboys Chiefs you know they've, they've played some really big teams uh, Bills Patriots I suppose Um Zach Wilson leads the league in fourth quarter comebacks this year. That's impressive. Yeah. And Good they've got a really, really strong defence. And their defence is starting to step up and starting to play. Their front seven is its like watching um, just... It's just wave after wave after wave. And it's looked really impressive at times. My only counter to it is that it was against what's Tommy DeVito. Was the backup, backup quarterback of the Jets. Yep. Yep. A half-injured Saquon Barkley... Who, who clearly is still recovering from his, his high ankle sprain. Yep. Um, Darren Waller goes out of the game within the first quarter. So the defence looked good, the Jets, but against Tommy DeVito and a, a, you know, a group of either injured or not that great. Is he taller than his brother? <laughs> so I don't think they've beat much. The only thing is, they, these, they, they seem to have... The, they've got a bit of a mojo about them. I don't know what it is with the Jets, but they seem to... They seem to bring teams down to their level, right? Yeah. So, no, I, I mean that it's, in a nice it's, it's, way. It's, it's like that stoked. metaphor yes. of fighting with an idiot, isn't right. it? Yeah, Never so. get into an argument with an idiot. They'll drag you yeah. down to their level and beat you with They're experience. They're always in a tight game. They're always in a tight game because they they make the game really simple. So when you, especially in their own house, this is at MetLife, yeah. they're going to welcome the charges in. They're really super consistent charges, mm -hmm. right? They're going to bring the charges in. They've got a real stiff backbone. They're always up for a scrap oh, of charges, yeah. aren't they? They're not, not a finesse team at all. Um, and they're going to make it really hard horrible, really dirty, really scrappy. And they're going to make it a low-scoring, tight game. It's up to the Chargers to make this a good game, yeah. not the Jets. And the Chargers are the class. It's up for them to do something different. If not, if the Jets play their own game, you'll lose. Zach Wilson, this is going to be interesting because the Chargers' pass defence has been dreadful this yeah. season. It's been really bad. They're worst for yards per game. They're fifth worst for rate allowed against them. It's just not great. No. But I think if you want to face any quarterback when you've got the thirty second best pass defense, yeah. you want to face Zach Wilson because I just don't, <laughs> I just don't think he's good enough. I think the Jets, they're one of those teams. I feel sorry for their fans. I think you put an elite quarterback into their team, and they could you potentially mean they get try. Like, they you mean like try. Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, yeah, like Aaron Rodgers. But <laughs> we all know what happened there. I think this is a must win for the Chargers. You know, mm. uh, they're three and four right now. And only nine teams since 1990 have made the playoffs when being three and five. Mm. They need to win this. They've got players like Austin Eckler, Justin Herbert. They can't be wasting these elite players. Yeah. I don't think Staley has been good enough, considering he's a defensive coach, to be 32nd in the league with a pass defense. It's quite embarrassing. He sounds like a Keenan, doesn't he? <laughs> it's like uh, almost exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, which way are you going, Holly? 
Um, I'm going to go with the Jets. <sighs> After all that, I'm going Chargers. I love the Jets. The Jets are my second team. I love the Jets, and I, I love what they're doing, and I love the fact that watching this on Monday night will be like watching You're a You're going Chargers, a aren't you? But the, if the Chargers <laughs> score 20 points, they've won, and they always score 20 points, don't they? So Chargers for me, because they've got to score, what, one touchdown in the game? Just, I could hear it coming. Um, he was giving it a big sell, and I'm like, he's definitely throwing the curveball in, in, in it, Kay. Yeah. Um, look, while we're talking about the Jets, can we just have a little bit of a conversation about Aaron Rodgers, who... Um, before that game against the Giants last week, was out on the field throwing some passes. He was also doing something that I wasn't anticipating, which was dropping back. Mm. So he was taking that ball, he was dropping back onto onto that um, Achilles injury that he's got, and he was firing passes around. This is nothing short of a borderline miraculous recovery from Aaron Rodgers, isn't it? Yeah, he's inhuman, really. Yeah. I mean, it's it's he'll be if he returns even for the Super Bowl. Right, he likely. Could make the playoffs yeah. here. If, no, but I'm saying if he if he returned to the Super Bowl, it would be the quickest return from a full Achilles tear in the history of the game. And, and he's and, on and he's on track to be back before the playoffs. I think he'll play week 15. Unbelievable. Week 15. That's what they're That's saying. Ridiculous. Um, which is what the GM said, which is really strange thing for the GM to come out with. Um, my my fear for the Jet, their offensive line is terrible. The reason he got injured in the first place is they can't they can't protect anybody. Yeah. Um, and Zach Wilson's playing well, considering that he's under pressure. Every single snap, yeah. he's right, running for his life. Um, so, is it wise to put a 39 year old quarterback with a bad Achilles coming back, coming behind that line Achilles too soon? I, I don't know, wait till next year for me, but um, it's amazing yeah. what you what say. He will be back before Christmas, certainly. And did you see that they've got themselves into a little bit of a row? Did you see this? This is fantastic no. this week. So, this is Aaron Rodgers on the Pat McAfee show, right? Who comes on and um, he has a bit of a pop at Jason Kelsey. Okay. Calls him Mr. Pfizer. Trav Travis, Travis Kelsey. Travis, Travis yeah, Kelsey. Yeah. Calls him yeah. Mr. Pfizer. Yeah. All right. Then he goes back and goes, I, you know, Kelsey comes back and says, I never thought I'd get into a war, uh, into a vax war with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers wheels himself back out again onto the Pat McAfee show and goes, this isn't, this isn't a war. This is just a conversation. <laughs> Let's go head to head. So I'm hoping that what we're going to see is either on New Heights or on... Uh, the Pat McAfee show, we're going to end up with uh, Travis Kelsey and uh, and Aaron Rodgers head to head. It'd be great. So it, Aaron Rodgers went into a darkness retreat, if you remember, at the end of last season yeah. to make a decision about which team, what he wanted to do with his future. Darkness, lived in darkness. And the music he listened to was by which artist? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. He's a Swifty, he's Aaron Rodgers. Uh, who isn't? Uh, right, final one is Thursday Night Football next week, so not tonight's game because we missed that by a country mile getting all these cameras and mics set up. Uh, let's do Carolina Panthers against the Chicago Bears in what is the stinkiest I mean, this... game of NFL football in a game week. <laughs> we give you Seahawks Ravens and Miami and KC <laughs> yeah. and then we give you Philadelphia and Dallas and then you have to watch Carolina at Chicago. Oh, you're, you're Bears though, so the field should be back for you a lot and I think... It was good. What was good at the weekend was Carolina's first win, and it was more than just a win for them. So they did get out the zero column. Um, it was the fact it was against C.J. Stroud, right, and the two Houston, yeah. Houston Texans. So the Panthers had the first pick, and they have to choose between C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. They chose Bryce Young, and C.J. Stroud's had a phenomenal start to the season. So for his first win, Bryce Young's first win to be against C.J. Stroud and the Texans, I think is monumental for the franchise. I yeah. think it makes them all just go. Yeah, just yeah, because he started so playing like, and I wonder if now with that pressure off and the, the, out of the zero column, that they might just um, go on to new things now. The Panthers, their defense has been really shaping well. Brian Burns is playing well. Derek Cox, they look like a really good um, defensive front. I think they can stop the run, which gives the Bears a problem. Um, if Fields is back though, this is a DJ Moore revenge game, isn't it? So DJ Moore let go by the Panthers. I don't think they've got anyone that can cover him. Um, it's a tight one, but I think probably. Chicago should have too much. Although the Bears have the Panthers pick, <laughs> so by beating them, they get they just hammer the Panthers down even further <laughs> wow. and secure themselves a number one pick, even if it's not their own. Yeah, I I think the Panthers need to win this game a lot more than the mm. Bears as a franchise. I think they've got that incentive. They don't have the pick, so you know tanking for them isn't going to help. No. Um, I think Chicago. I don't think they have anything about them. I think Carolina. Now they've got their first win. I think that was so important. You could argue that you'd think 
when you go in 0-6, the, the, some people might not believe in the head coach, they might not believe in the quarterback, but when I've seen the videos of the locker room of Bryce Young after that win, they're all behind him. Yeah. He is a leader, and he is someone that you know this franchise can build around. Um, and they've got the Colts this weekend, and I think the Colts is a very winnable game. Yeah. Uh, you know they've con- they've conceded a lot of points in their last two games, uh, Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. So I think if they can get that win, the Panthers, or even get a tight result, that momentum can, play well, yeah. that momentum can carry them on to against Chicago and get the win. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Who are you picking? I'm gonna go with Carolina. Yeah, me too. Bears for me. You've only gone that way because we've both gone Carolina, though. No, no, I don't write mine down before. I think the Bears are the better team, aren't they? And they don't need to worry about tanking because they just need to hammer the Panthers and hope they have the worst record because they get their pick anyway. I, I, I'm i always at a loss when I've got a pick at either the Chicago Bears or I mean, or we a all game. lose, yeah, don't we? No, yeah. the, the point is that I can't win. If I no. pick the Bears, I get accused of being a Bears fan. If I don't pick the Bears, you basically say, well, you're trying to show that you're not a Bears fan and neither of those things are true. So uh, off you go and into the bin. On the way, we will talk about our bets of the week. I'm just going to shout louder than everybody else and we're going to get there and we'll have our Rotter Punts of the Week as well coming up in a sec. Right then, bets uh, of the week. What have you got for us, Daniel? Um, so a four-way this week. So I've got Ooh. Miami plus seven and a half. Um, I think that game will be close if they do lose. Uh, I've got the Seahawks plus 14 and a half, which I think is just disrespectful. Um, <laughs> Dallas and Philadelphia over 46 and a half points and Buffalo Cincinnati over five and a half touchdowns. Okay. And that pays just over four to one. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. Not bad at all. Um, we did give you the heads up that you needed to yeah. prepare one of these this week. So what have you gone for? I've gone with two anytime touchdown scorers. He's been more circumspect than his uncle. That's good. Yeah, so I've gone with McCole Hardman at 11 to 2 for an anytime touchdown. Okay. Now, the reason I've gone with that is because Kansas City have brought him back because their wide receiver core, they don't trust in them. They haven't been good enough this year. You know, kind of Kelsey and Mahomes has carried them mm-hmm. to their six and two record. I just think he's going to get targeted more, and I think that you know, at those odds, it's a good one to play. It's a bet. Absolutely, they had a good relationship at his previous tenure at Kansas City. The second one I've gone with is Mark Andrews at the Ravens at seven to five. I already mentioned him. I hope you're right. Yeah, because I think the Seahawks are susceptible to you know conceding points against tight ends. They. David Njuku had 77 yards and a touchdown against them last week. And Andrews with six touchdowns this season leading. He's really impressive. I think he's going to get that. So that puts it at 14.6 to one, which will get you 78 quid. Nice. He's good, isn't he? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. Knows he's maths too. Right, uh, we've run out of time on utter punts, which means this happens. Uh, and it means that we get nominations for utter punt of the week. You get to go in the middle today, Ollie. Dan's going to go first. Okay. Yeah, I, I was. I'm furious. Oh, really? Why? And I, I, I was so angry on uh, Tuesday morning. I nearly declared vengeance on somebody, which it happens rarely, and doesn't end well for anybody. Yeah. Um, I was so annoyed. So we, what we, happened, we, we have a we had a nine to one bet going, didn't we, last week with the points? Oh yeah, he was and they're close. all coming in, right? And they're flying. The Lions are absolutely spanking the Raiders. They're knocking them all over the place. And all they've got to do is get to twenty eight points. They're on twenty six points, Andy, with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Eight minutes to go. They're on a twenty yard line. They have a twenty six yard field goal. And Riley Patterson, whose job is to kick field goals, mostly from about forty yards. 26 should be doable. Smashes it to the right. That's a punt. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely with you. Ollie, who have you got for us? I think Raiders Nation are going to agree with me on this. I've gone with Jimmy Garoppolo as my utter punt of the week. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, He's come out of the gate th- swinging. Th- now, this is a personal piece. handsome man in football. <laughs> That's the only reason he's got a job. <laughs> I've got a personal beef with him over okay. this. Um, I was facing my dear old dad in fantasy football, oh, and I no. lost by three points. Devontae Adams, my first overall pick this year, got two and a half points. If Jimmy Garoppolo could throw the ball, he would have had 150 yards and two touchdowns, but he didn't because he can't throw the ball. So, Jimmy Garoppolo, you're my utter punt of the week. I think that's more than fair. I, this week, and it's a really good shout, I, this week, I'm going uh, with the Denver Broncos head of social media, Caroline Daisley. Oh, yeah, know her well. Do you want to know why I've gone with her? Do tell. Because of the outright pettiness on the 
Um, Denver Broncos social media pages following their win over the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't mind a bit of shit owsery. In fact, I'm I'm more than game for a bit of shit owsery. This went past that. He went past it, and it went into petty and small minded. And I'm not down for this. All right. There was a social media video of Brock Lesnar slamming the Undertaker into the mat. And on Brock Lesnar's chest, he was proudly sporting a Denver Broncos logo that was doing that thing where they haven't quite got the motion tracking yeah. right and it's yeah. moving all over the place. And then on The Undertaker, it was the Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs. And I thought, well, that's a right diabolical liberty. I'm not having any of that. And then they decided to take pot shots at the analysts that had said that they were going to lose. OK, so they put, posted a picture of Kermit the Frog sipping a cup of tea and having a pop at the analysts. What were the analysts supposed to do? You're terrible. You've been terrible all season. They're supposed to predict that the better team beats the worst team. That's what they did. Put your Kermit the Frog back in the box. And the worst part, the worst part of the pettiness, and this is why it's really wound me up to a pitch, is that at the end of the game, yeah, when they've beaten so... the Kansas City Chiefs, what did they play on the PA? They played Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Get in the bin, social media team. Otter punts. We'll see you next week.